Hey, love bugs. Welcome back to another YouTube video for We Go Podcast. I am your girl, Taria. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. Um, I do have a podcast episode dropping on the podcast feed, and then it'll be the video will be uploaded to YouTube. It'll be either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. It's the Orange County um, recap, but been kind of busy. I recorded it yesterday, but we've been kind of busy. So it will definitely be uploaded either tonight or tomorrow. So y'all can get my thoughts on the Orange County premiere. Um, spoiler alert, I loved it. I hope y'all watched it. This season looks like it's going to be good. So let's get into some other topics, quick topics that I wanted to come and talk to y'all about. First, first off, how y'all doing? I hope y'all are doing good. Y'all, today, the temperature on my car thing said 102 degrees. One zero two. I said it should be illegal for anyone to go outside in those temperatures. I believe that um, there should be something in place with the government where if it reaches certain temperatures, it's mandatory you stay home, but you get paid. Because 102 degrees is evil work. It is. Um, so I hope y'all are staying cool, putting on y'all black girl sunscreen if y'all are going out, okay? All right, let's get into these topics. First off, y'all, let's speak on, who want to speak on first? Who, child, let's speak on Rachel Lindsay. Some of y'all know Rachel Lindsay was on uh, the podcast a while back and shortly after her divorce uh, from her husband was announced. Well, I came to y'all last week. I think I talked about how he wanted spousal support from her. He wanted a certain amount. I believe he wanted like 16,000 based on his bills, his entertainment and all that stuff. She thought 9,000 would be good. Well, the judge has ruled. This is according to People. Rachel Lindsay ordered to pay ex Brian Abasalo 13,000 monthly in spousal support despite opposing his request. The former Bachelorette star previously said her ex's request for spousal support was not supported by competent evidence and far exceed his need. Brian Abasala scored a major legal victory over Rachel Lindsay in their ongoing divorce proceedings earlier this month. On July 10th, the former couple made virtual appearances in court related to their ongoing divorce. I wonder if they were in the same house because he's been staying there. So I wonder, you imagine she's downstairs or she's upstairs in the room, child, and he's downstairs and they're on virtual divorce court together and you about to be told you got to pay, child. And after back and forth over Abbasala's request for spousal support, the judge granted the chiropractor's wishes. According to documents obtained by People, Lindsay was ordered to pay Abbasalo temporary spousal support in the sum of $13,257 per month, starting on July 15th with no end date specified. The former bachelorette was also ordered to pay a total of $20,000 related to Abbasalo's legal fees by September 3rd. He initiated this divorce. Remember, he wanted the divorce. And now I got to pay because I was fighting to keep my money and I got to pay my lawyers. Abbasalo originally filed for divorce from Lindsay after four years of marriage on January the 2nd, citing irreconcilable differences in the months since the filing the couple has gone back and forth over their relationship and about how the filing itself was communicated in a june 26 filing Lindsay alleged that abbasalo told her he had filed for divorce over text after they'd had a conversation in my kitchen during which he failed to mention that he had filed on january 2nd approximately 30 minutes after he left the house he sent me a text message that simply read hey i just wanted to let you know that i officially filed she claimed, adding that she was shocked by the news. Abbasalo refuted his ex's claims, providing new text messages from their conversation and alleging that she wasn't surprised or shocked that he filed for divorce. Finances have also been a topic of debate between the former couple who got engaged on season 21 of The Bachelorette and wed in 2019. In the months since Abbasalo, uh, Abbasalo filed, he originally requested spousal support in a May 1st filing where he requested emergency financial support and $75,000 for his legal fees from his ex and claimed his annual income was $16,000. Let me tell you something. So she's got to pay him $13,257 per month. It's temporary, but there's no end date. And then she's got to pay total. And that starts July 15th. 
and she's got to pay $20,000 related to his legal fees. I would want him gone. Take that how you will. I would want him gone. You're taking my hard-earned money when you can get out there and work, whether you got to get another job, two jobs, what have you. And I'm paying for your entertainment because in your filing, you didn't even just include your bills. You included your entertainment. The nerve, let me, when I tell y'all, the rage. Jesus would have to come off of his throne, travel down to me, Tap me on the shoulder. He may have to restrain me. Remember when I spoke on this a couple of weeks ago and Brian had said that she frequently changes the Wi-Fi filing. You would never use a piece of Wi-Fi in my home. You lucky I don't have the water cut off or some kind of way where I can control the water. And when I leave, don't know water run from the faucets. I have a mini fridge in my room with a lock on my door. You won't eat nothing in this. No. The only thing you'll be able to do in this house is be uncomfortable. Can y'all imagine? Like, seriously. Who, Lindsay, girl. Uh, I'm saying Lindsay, Rachel, girl. Because the article was calling her by her last name, Lindsay. So now I'm saying Lindsay. Like, no, it, in all seriousness. I would be devastated having to turn over my hard earned money to this man, especially if what she says is true. Like he, he exacerbated their lifestyle. If he can already pay his bills and only have a certain amount left over, he gonna have this whole 13,000. She makes, she said she makes six, what? 60 some thousand dollars a month. Let's just say, I believe I said 60 or 61. So she'll have a good 45 left over, what about 47 left over. And then she's got to pay her bills and she's got to pay his $20,000, uh, pay $20,000 towards his legal fees. I just, I would be sick. Moving on before I get to um, hyperventilating and, and shaking and crying and throwing up on her behalf. Next time, get a prenup, Rachel. Her dad is a judge. I believe she was... Um, Wait a minute. I did know what kind of lawyer she was. Let me, because I believe I don't. I believe it's. Hold on. She was a. Uh, she was a civil defense litigation attorney. I thought it was like tax or something, like maybe a tax law. So you would think going and her dad is a judge. Um, going forward, I truly hope any relationship she gets into, she gets a prenup. Like any, if she gets married again, she gets a prenup. Like no ifs, ands, buts. I don't care. We're date. We might child. I would be so scarred dating. I'd have to have them sign something. I don't even know what that something would be, but you got to sign something. But yeah, she's got to pay him thirteen thousand two hundred and fifty-seven dollars a month and twenty thousand related to his legal fees. Moving on, let's talk about Hama. And so this is for this investment brand. Oh, y'all, hold on. Well, hold on, y'all. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. I didn't lost y'all. Hold on a minute. My uh, microphone plug came out. Hold on. There we go. Okay, I, th I think I'm back. So let's talk about Common. And this is according to the Jasmine brand. See how upset that got me with uh, Rachel having to pay Brian Child, rip my microphone cord out. All right, let's talk. So Common speaks on relationship with girlfriend Jennifer Hudson. If I'm going to get married, it's her. If I'm going to get married, it's her. Common is sharing new insight into his romance with his girlfriend, Jennifer Hudson. During a newly aired interview with The Breakfast Club, rapper, actor Common opened up about his relationship with fellow Chicago native Jennifer Hudson. While the two have quietly been an item for some time now, Common spoke on how dating the EGOT winner allowed him 
to go to their hometown to tap into his Chicago roots for his latest music project, The Auditorium, Volume 1. Speaking on getting the chance to spend time back home, Common, whose real name is Lonnie Lynn, I don't know why that reminds me of uh, Reverend Lonnie Love from Martin. Um, he expressed, I'm going to be real, I'm going to be real, real with you. Like having a lady just from Chicago allows me to go home and just be home. And I hadn't did that in a while where I was just going home and just being around my loved ones and didn't have no work to do. And that man, I ain't going to front that helped me with this album because just going to your roots, you got to always recharge and replug and plug into them roots. No matter how much you've elevated, you've still got to get to them roots. While co-host Charlemagne the God mentioned that it sounded like Common was building a real foundation, seemingly referencing Jennifer Hudson, the MC shared, with all due respect to all the women I've dated, it's all love, but this is a really healthy and beautiful relationship. Common also discussed the time when Hudson brought ice cream for everyone on the set of the movie they co-starred in together, Breathe, noting that he likes people who treat others well. He furthered, if I'm going to get married, it's to her. That's as simple as that. The Oscar winner datedly, uh, the Oscar winner's dating reportedly goes back to July 2022 when they were spotted having dinner together in Philadelphia. In January, the pair confirmed their relationship after Common made an appearance on the Jennifer Hudson show. So he didn't say he was going to get married and it's going to be her. He said if he was to get married, it would be to her. No disrespect to his other relationships, but this relationship he's in right now with her is just a really healthy and beautiful relationship. What y'all think? Y'all think Common is going to marry Jennifer? We shall see. Moving on, let's talk about Irv Gotti. Now, this is according to the Neighborhood Talk. Irv Gotti hit with alleged sexual assault lawsuit from a woman he dated from 2020 to 2022, claims that he made her perform unwanted sexual acts, had to get committed to the psych ward. So according to the Miami New, T the Miami New Times, the lawsuit was filed July 11th down in Miami-Dade. The woman who has been listed as Jane Doe claims that at different times from 2020 to 2022, she experienced sexual abuse. Oh, she experienced abuse and sexual assault in St. Martin, Miami and Atlanta. As a result of this sexually abusive relationship, excuse me, all plaintiff has suffered severe emotional and psychological harm for which she had to be committed to a psychiatric ward, the lawsuit reads these injuries continue and affect the plaintiff to this day the woman claims she met irv through a friend back in 2020 he invited her on a vacation to saint martin shortly after and she accepted when she arrived she claims irv allegedly pressured her to have sex with him or he would send her home due to his power and influence in the music world she complied the suit states when the trip was over the two kept in touch started dating and eventually progressed into a relationship which she claims was filled with constant abuse. I want to pause for a minute. I do wonder. They met uh, through a friend and he flew her out to where he was. Once he flew her out there, he pressured her into having sex, allegedly. And if she didn't, he was going to fly her home. She did. Trip ends. And they stay in contact and eventually start dating. I, I just wonder what made her start dating him. And this is not victim blaming. This is not anything like that. Because I don't care if they were dating for 15 years, married for 20. If he assaulted her, then he needs to be held accountable. I just wonder what would make a, what made her, again, it's not like they were in a relationship and he did it and she was afraid to run away, afraid of being harmed. She had just met him, flew out to see him. He allegedly, again, pressured her into having sex or he was going to send her home, sexual acts, or he was going to send her home. She did them. And then she keeps in touch with him and gets into a relationship with him. I wonder why that was. Did she end up finding herself liking him? I mean, what was it? After he did something that seems heinous, Anybody pressuring you into anything sexual is heinous. And then she got into a relationship with him. For instance, when Gotti flew the woman to Miami in January 2022, and they stayed at the Four Seasons Hotel, he forced her to perform oral sex on him in the elevator, 
according to the lawsuit. That summer, when he flew her out to Atlanta, he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him in an Uber. Following this event, the relationship ended, the lawsuit reads. The woman is seeking a jury by trial, thoughts. Now, I will say this. Regardless of if she chose to get with him after that first incident, he could have apologized. He could have even told her, listen, I thought it was consensual, what have you. If he did all these things and abused her and all of that, he needs to be held accountable. And that's just on period. Like, there's no excuse. I'm so sick of, you know, just hearing about, we know it happens, but just hearing about these men, um, wielding their power over women um, and taking and out, out her and, and out other ones we've heard too, you know, Diddy, all of them using sex as a tool to, with the promises of furthering their career or I don't know, it just, I'm just really getting tired of hearing it. But we know it's a tale as old as time that that uh, happens. <sighs> Again, if all these things were done to her, I'm glad she's speaking up. And I hope that he gets what he deserves. And I wonder if this is going to be cause for other women to speak up that may or may not have been sexually violated by him. Like if there's other women out there, I have a feeling maybe other women will come out and um, speak up. And I hope so. If he's out there violating women, um, I definitely hope that, uh, you know, other women speak up. Let's get into something else, y'all. Something I need y'all to see. Hold, please. Y'all ready? Wait a minute. Don't start with me. I had this all set up, y'all. I promise I did. Oh, okay. It changed when. Okay. All right. I need y'all to hear this. Are you sit where is the video? Here we go. No. Y'all, I'm here we go. Wait, y'all, I am annoyed. Hold on. Next time, this is okay. Wait a minute. Here we go. Come on, y'all gonna remove the ad after y'all. Seven, I'm getting ready to scream. Huh, oh, maybe I won't be able to play the video. I wanted y'all to hear. Have y'all heard of the girl? Wait, here we go. Here we go. She's facing a ton of criticism. Y'all heard that? Let y'all hear it from the beginning. Hold on. Let y'all hear it from the beginning. This is rude. It won't go back to the beginning. Hold on. In Arlington, Texas. Several players. On All right. Well, y'all heard it. Philadelphia Phillies. Y'all like to read. We don't. We don't. We don't need to hear it anymore. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What is going on? Y'all. It's the heat. The heat got me. Hold on. There we go. Y'all are like, Taria, we don't need to hear no, no, no more of it. We're done. Um, so y'all heard her sing the national anthem. Now she is coming out saying she was drunk and is checking herself into rehab. Ingrid Andrews claims she was drunk during her highly criticized national anthem performance at the 2024 MLB Home Run Derby and is now checking herself into rehab. I'm not going to BS y'all. I was drunk last night. She wrote via X on Tuesday. I'm checking myself into a facility today to get the help I need. She went on to say that she was not herself during the performance. She also issued an apology to the NBL, the league's fans in this country that she loved so much. 
She said, I'm not going to BS y'all. I was drunk last night. I'm checking myself into a facility today to get the help that I need. That was not me last night. I apologize to MLB and all the fans and this country I love so much for that rendition. I'll let y'all know how rehab is. I hear it's super fun. XO Ingrid. Her reps did not immediately respond to page six's request for comment. She released a statement one day after she was ridiculed for the horrible rendition of the national anthem she delivered at the MLB Home Run Derby in Arlington, Texas on Monday night. During the performance, the country singer struggled to hit notes as several players on the field, most notably Philly's third baseman Alec Bond, could be seen attempting to hide their laughter. Fans ripped the four-time Grammy nominee. Child thought she was just like a social media person. I didn't know she sings for real. What in the world, dear Lord, that was pitiful, wrote one ex-user. That Ingrid Andrus national anthem might have been the worst thing to happen in America in the last 48 hours. Hashtag brutal. Okay, listen. Has any of y'all heard of her and can she sing? Because I was getting ready to say, if you sing and you're drunk, does the alcohol make you sound like you can't hit the notes. Like you would be able to tell, you know, like singers have messed up before. Like my husband's a singer. I haven't really heard him honestly uh, messed up too much. I, he comes from a family of singers. I'm sure they have, but even still, even if they like hit a, a note or something like that, you still know that they can sing. They just may have sung that note wrong or it was flat or whatever, but you know that they sing, right? I didn't get the impression that she could sing just based on, and it definitely was based on a snippet, but I didn't get that. But it, she's a Grammy nominee. I wonder if she really has a problem or because of this backlash, it's like, let's get ahead of it or right behind it rather. And say that I was drinking and I'm checking myself into rehab because I didn't see anything that says she had a problem. She didn't say I was drinking. I've had a problem um, with overindulging. And last night was just one example of many, um, but it was a sobering wake up call. And I'm going to go ahead and check myself into rehab. I thank you guys um, so much for your support. And I'll see you on the other side of this. Anything, but just, I was drunk last night. I'm embarrassed. I'm checking myself into rehab. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Again, have y'all heard her music? Can she really sing? And this truly was the case of the a a a a a a a a alcohol. Y'all let me know. All right, y'all. So we've talked about Ingrid and her singing. Let me see if I can play it again. Now y'all don't want me to play again. Um, I will say though, the way that sounded was an audio representation of our country right now. For real. Let me know what y'all think about Irv Gotti and um, him being accused of the things that he's accused of. Let me know what y'all think about Common. Y'all think that he is going to marry Jennifer Hudson? Because he was quick to say, if I if I were to get married, she's who he would marry. And Rachel Lindsay having to pay Brian $13,257 along with a total of $20,000 related to his legal fees. Oh, child, I wouldn't want him here. All right, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I will talk to y'all later and I love y'all so much. See ya. Watch Love Island tonight.